All right, we are live. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Guys, Charlie, Miguel, how have you been? Good, good, good. Just uh, getting some eats in while we can, while we're um, going between stream to stream to stream during this course uh, time. So, uh, yeah, just kind of on, on overdrive right now and uh, lack of sleep mode. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel's even awake at this hour. It was yeah. only 12 minutes late. <laughs> I think I was only five, so <laughs> yeah. Charlie's only five. He gets off the hook. Miguel, there not you. <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with him. <laughs> I forgot for for you for you Europeans, right? Like Americans, it's like on time is five to ten minutes late. You know, in Japan, it's like five to ten minutes early is on time, uh, even up to fifteen minutes early. Like, how about over there in Amsterdam, or not in Amsterdam, in uh, in where you're at in the. Uh, um, the Dutch areas. It depends. It depends. Mostly we're on time. I'm always early because I just like to be early. And right. a lot of people are late as well. Yeah. So like what's are. what's the grace period though is kind of what I'm wondering. Like because like America, you get like a 10, 10, maybe 15 minute grace period. And you're like, okay, you're relatively on time. You're still good for the most part. Like it depends on the person, obviously. Like the more mm -hmm. stuck up they are, the, the less forgiving. But um what ten would be minutes. the grace period? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Ten minutes. Yeah. What about for the French? Are they worse? Oh, they are way worse. <laughs> nobody likes the French. Like in the entirety of Europe, nobody likes the French. I'm not I even sure the know. French like the French. Actually, I've met a, quite a few French people who say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised, Miguel? How much sleep did you get, by the way? I slept wonderfully, dude. I got a lot of sleep last night. It was. I, I was like telling Charlie, like, dude, I feel like a million bucks. How many hours? Um, probably from, um, it may, have been, it may have been something like nine hours of sleep. Oh, like, damn, bro. You got, you got a good one there. Yeah. 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 That was, it was yeah, great. It was kind of, I was really shocked when I woke up. I was like, wow, I feel good as hell, but it's cause I, I fell asleep right after our stream. Like, uh, just yeah. a little bit after that. Yeah. I just ate something and then just boom, passed out. Gotcha. 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 And then you woke up and crypto was still falling. <laughs> although it did recover a bit though like yesterday it was a complete bloodbath but today it's more stable yeah and there's we're just when we were on the other stream um on my channel you know like uh there's a few coins like altcoins and stuff that are even going into new uh you know uptrends right now to, to some extent so that's actually quite uh encouraging for the broader crypto market uh, to tell you the truth, though, my portfolio really hasn't gone down much at all on this drop, which is really mm. hilarious. Actually, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll tell you right now, I hold almost no BTC. Um, I hold some Ethereum, obviously, and then I hold a lot of other altcoins, and those coins mm. haven't really gone down much at all. Um, mm -hmm. So, compared, yeah, comparatively to entry points, right? So that's correct. Yeah, yeah. that's an important point, uh, like there, because like we've been entering into this market, <clears throat> you know, quite quite a while and uh it does help quite a lot as well when you dollar cost average over a longer period of a bull market so right. um you know like there it's interesting to watch you know people who take our course right because there's some people who like they're brand new and they kind of get like we hand them a lot of good information on a platter and then they fumble it they don't they do it you know a little bit skewed towards you know their psychology which sometimes isn't the best um but then we get people who we really shift their psychology over one to two courses right and then they um actually like they do plays like really really well and they're like okay that's more like it you know so it's like it's interesting to see kind of like the learning curve for different people in this crypto market like takes it's, it's just a little bit different for everybody mm -hmm. what's the most common thing you'd say you two run into when it comes to a mindset shift mm -hmm. like you mean like the most necessary mindset shift that people need to yeah make the most necessary it. mindset shift i'd i'd reckon it'd be buy when it's low and sell when it's high instead of the other way around which a lot of people still tend to do right. yeah so celebrate the dips right like when the portfolios uh let's say you got in like a little high because you're new right you didn't get in on the best prices and like you know your portfolio's in the red and you're like oh my god i'm losing all this money well a you didn't lose until you sell right and then b that's a gift. Why? Because you can dollar cost average down, right? So if you bought, let's say, Polkadot at $45 and currently it's at $25, well, if you if you buy at $25, right, you basically move your average price down to 35 So then you're going to be earlier in profit um, when the market comes back. So I think that uh, right there, some people is like, you can kind of view it as doubling down to some extent. Um, some people 
aren't quite prepared for that. So um, that that is one example, I think, of a mindset shift. And the people who make that shift, they tend to celebrate the dips because they're like, oh, more time to buy cheap. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a sale on crypto, people. Come on. I had a friend yesterday who I uh, I told him, like, crypto is very low right now. He's like, yeah, I'll think about it next week to put a little bit in. I'm like, by the way, it can be volatile. So don't panic when it goes down. That's a good thing. He's like, oh, don't worry. I won't lose my mind so fast. I'm like, you will. You, you <laughs> most definitely will, my friend. <laughs> you have no idea what this market holds. Yeah, for sure. That's the yeah. truth right there. <laughs> ha, I see what you did there. So yeah. what is happening actually with the market right now? Because I have the idea that it's mostly tax related stuff with like the whales and what whales are for people like the big buyers, like the million billion kind of buyers in crypto. They get a tax advantage when their total asset amount is just lower in the month of December and January. So there will be a lot of selling off right now. That's kind yeah, of yeah, the so idea I get what's going on. Yeah, you, so, so it's two things. One, it's for taxes. Yeah, you're better. Um, if you, there's profits you want to take in December that you can't because if you sell it in December, you'll be liable to pay that tax in the, the, the following April. But if you wait until the, until the next year, let's just say January, like we're in right now, you don't have to pay that until 20, April 2023 instead of 2022. Mm -hmm. So it's a way, it's a way like, so what people end up doing is they take profits right through January and, and they, and they essentially get to pay that tax basically a year and a half down the line. The other part is um, there's a lot of like crypt, large crypto funds and also corporations where depending on how well they did in crypto, crypto did really good in 2021. They're in huge profits. And these guys are like, have these gigantic bonuses if they cash out. So what a lot of them do is they, they cash out in November, December. Um, not caring about the tax implications because there's no taxes on them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's what it is. And basically, they're all cash up until January, February, and they start reinvesting back in. So what they do is they complete cash out in November, December, get their bonuses, yay. Then they're starting all with cash again, and they make new cash positions into into all the projects that year, and essentially roll the whole year, and then do it all. That rinse repeat basically, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what's going on right now. That's why me and Charlie weren't really like spooked out with this drop or anything like that anyway, just because we know the institutional that this market has, uh, or at least this cycle has been a lot more VC a VC cycle versus a retail cycle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we, we, I mean, even even though we have a lot of people coming into the space right now, it's not as much. And the fervor is not as much as it was back in 2017. 2017 was completely retail dominated. And uh, when retail is in that amount of manic, crazy phase and stuff, I like had the prices. I mean, it was just like, it was a hockey stick like this up on all the prices. Like there wasn't nothing you couldn't buy that you couldn't make money on. Like I would hold, I would buy a Litecoin for $4 and like the next week it'd be $40 like that, like that overnight. And then eventually that coin even went to $420. And stuff like that you know like ethereum was 50 cents it went up to 1400 dollars. bitcoin um i think it started it started at like i think eight hundred thousand dollars basically at the beginning of 17 and then uh of course ran up to 20k basically nineteen thousand dollars not, not 800 yeah yeah i think you spoke there you said eight hundred thousand dollars oh yeah eight hundred dollars sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day miguel dollars. one day we'll get there <laughs> I mean, it's on the way, you guys. <laughs> I mean, that, that was a bit of the narrative in 2021, right? The 100K Bitcoin. And then, nope, not mm. this year. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Miguel. Oh, yeah. We, we, I mean, that is true. Even though it didn't happen, um, I'm still pretty confident we're probably going to get it this year. But it, it's but it, for that trade off, because we didn't get that, we got something else that was pretty powerful as well, which is we had one of the longest kind of alt runs ever basically mm. so there was much more money i mean uh, i mean obviously look i want bitcoin to hit 100k let's just be for real i do just just for the just just because it's gonna make me laugh <laughs> <laughs> just it's nice to see a hundred thousand dollar btc because that's when we'll start getting a little bit of retail fervor it's not not to say that this entire um, cycle is it's going to be a, a retail cycle the next one coming up is going to be a retail cycle because the products and the l1s and the chains are going to actually be able to handle some of the throughput, so retail, so a large amount of retail can get onboarded, so we can get the crazy, you know, um, price increases. So um, once we hit a hundred thousand dollar on BTC, it's gonna, it's going to be like the big headline. 
do you know if you had bought BTC back in 2013, you know, all that, you know, all that, you know, the, the media is going to, you know, get all that. And then eventually that'll get a bunch of retail in and that'll really cause a lot of price pumps. And then from there, we'll get probably, a, um, you know, a price top somewhere within six, to eight months of that, basically, mm-hmm. um, w- between that, between that price hike, which is good for all of us because we're in right now before that. So, um, but the important part why I'm, I'm pretty happy even regardless is because obviously we weren't just in BTC or even Ethereum. We were in a lot of other coins. Those other coins did many multiples. I mean, like if, if you if you were buying anything back in 2019, 2020, um, I mean, you had Cardano being basically worth a penny, two, three cents. And today is like a dollar and some change. Even XRP was like 20 cents, <laughs> 15 cents. <laughs> During back in the day, it was like a couple of, you know, dollars and some change. I mean, Litecoins are twenty-two bucks. Bitcoins are thirty, thirty-three hundred dollars. You know, and even even a couple months ago and stuff, you still were able to buy coins pretty ch- relatively cheap, like uh, Phantom, um, where it was a dollar, and today we're at two dollars. So there, there's quite a lot of coins that have made a lot of money, and even during this downturn, a lot of coins have kept their gains as well. Yep, which is lows, fun. baby. Yeah, <laughs> but that is something you two talk in in the course as well, right? Where it's like, okay, like your main investment would mostly be bitcoin itself btc but there is a way that when bitcoin drops in and of itself there are a multitude of coins where you can um, for lack of better terms like safeguard your assets to switch that into a different coin yeah it's basically you know the idea of cultivating your coins right so compounding your coins um, which is hence, you know, cultivate crypto and dollar cost crypto, right? Because, um, you know, you want to dollar cost average into your coins and then you want to use those coins to compound you more coins, uh, essentially to, to cultivate them. So um, <clears throat> basically, you know, there's multiple ways to do that, right? So as you can basically, if you're like newer to the market, yeah, start with Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, I would say right now in this current market, it's basically like you can ignore Bitcoin for now. Um, and you could just go straight to Ethereum, uh, where we're at in this bull market. If we were back in like 2019, 2020, Bitcoin was really the only thing moving. Ethereum was, I think, like uh, fluctuating a bit, but really, like we even had people in our first course in, in uh, Q4 of 2020 and uh, complaining, like Ethereum's not moving. You guys said to buy Ethereum, and like it hasn't moved that much all quarter. I'm just like, that was when Ethereum was under five hundred dollars, right? People were complaining about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. good times. Yeah, and then you know it's uh, currently at thirty one hundred dollars on a dip, right? So, and, and that's just like a year later, going right? to zero, going to zero, man. Yeah, and, and so that's kind of like how we're viewing a lot of these what we call layer one blockchains or cryptocurrencies right now, with like Phantom, Avax, um, Luna. Uh, polka dot and these different things um, the ones that are basically giving a ethereum a run for their money they outpaced ethereum and bitcoin in 2021 and we expect them to continue to outpace bitcoin and ethereum in 2022 so really you know getting a good chunk of a position in ethereum is a safe place so when in doubt by eth but then you want to you know get into these a little bit like not necessarily higher risk but you know basically um, higher volatile higher volatility coins that have already outpaced ETH and will continue to outpace ETH in order to, you know, by the end of this market, you know, have as much gains as possible to kind of parachute out and then just uh, land in a, in a nice uh, field and uh, buy then, uh, you know, the main coins of the market on the lows in the early stage or late stages of the next bear market, early stages of the next bull market. So that's kind of the process, but, you know, it's easy to describe the process, hard to execute for a lot of people. So that's why we kind of go into detail about how to execute that during the course. And then also some people, if, if right there, what I said was kind of like speaking French, you know, then, I mean, you absolutely need the course. If you're going to be involved in cryptocurrency, because if you don't understand that kind of ebb and flow process of what I just described right there, it's going to be rough going in the crypto markets throughout this bull market for the most part, in my opinion, for most people, if they don't understand mm. how that game of somewhat musical chairs kind of works oh yeah especially because it's so volatile like we've said like most people emotionally are just not ready for that i mean you just yeah. mentioned a 500 hundred eight. dollar eat i'd kill for that <laughs> <laughs> well so I, we can get that arranged <laughs> no, oh you know we, we got we got some pleb sacrifices on the way <laughs> <laughs> but um funnily enough we just mentioned like the forty thousand uh btc Last year, when you look at the fear greed index, that was 
greed like 90 percent, something like that mm. and now yeah. the fear index is at 10 percent mm. even though it's the same number the the complete shift on perspective <laughs> like yeah. 40k last year was did it had it hit 60k yet no nope. or was I that mean, the, around the old time high yeah it was the all-time high yeah in january of last year it was like brand new all-time highs baby bitcoin's twice as high as its previous all-time high of 20k man like living on the moon is great right and then mm. now you're basically hey bitcoin dropped to 40k we're all going homeless you know yeah <laughs> and people believe it they they don't have the perspective of looking a year back it's right. like look where we came from yeah. yeah and even the year before that it was on was it below 10k i believe uh yeah yeah, yeah. exactly it had a, a lot of trouble breaking ten thousand five hundred dollars you know from basically i think it went under ten thousand five hundred sometime in the spring summer of 2018 and then it didn't get solidly back above there until about two two and a half years later in, no in but now we're going to zero yeah yep, now we are <laughs> Yeah. Now, now, definitely, we are going to zero. <laughs> it's going to happen. But that kind of hooks in greatly to the mindset part because it's not only you guys who like keep your participants of the course calm. It's the noise from outside. There is mm. so much fear, uncertainty, and doubt going on, especially in the media, uh, social media as well, by the way, because I've seen a lot of like uh, blue check or Twitter accounts all of a sudden being very negative about crypto and mm. then you have the um the institutions as well and i don't know about you guys but i always get the idea that the inter institutions want the average day normal guy to sell so they can buy up yep they want you wrecked <laughs> oh yeah they absolutely do and that's what i like about you guys where it's like okay guys here's really what's going on Mm. Right. and have you have you guys encountered a lot of guys who wanted to get into crypto but it's like my parents uh think it's unsafe my friends think it's too risky uh you name it girlfriend probably like she doesn't want me to put all my savings and her holiday money into crypto <laughs> looking at you miguel filthy degenerate sir i have control of my females <laughs> <laughs> look out of here with that bullshit <laughs> show, show them the thing she got for you recently Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My girl, what the females? Know. How many yeah. did you buy? <laughs> oh, nice. New Year's yeah. gift. Go to the moon, yeah. baby. Yeah. I, I have all kinds of stuff. I've got multiple spacesuits over there and everything like that. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about that, by the way, when will the big titty girlfriends arrive? How <laughs> how high does Bitcoin must Bitcoin be for them to finally like walk up to my door? Eighty-one k, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold out for that long. I can hold out for that long. There you go. There you go. Well, the, the one thing that's hilarious, there's this guy named, he's actually, which country? I think he's like German or something. His name is Marco Streng. He has one of the, the biggest mining operations in, uh, I think it's Iceland, uh, called Genesis Mining, one of the biggest mining operations in Bitcoin globally. And mm -hmm. he has a hilarious story, you know, just talking about, you know, girls and stuff like that, right? His chick back in, I think it was like 2012, 2013, when he first started mining Bitcoin was like, why are you like mining this Bitcoin thing? Like it's worthless. It's just like magic internet money. Like, and all these like computers and, you know, uh, mining things that you got going on are really noisy, annoying and like get rid of that shit. And then he was just like, goes to the store, buys like as, as many GPUs as they can, they can sell them, buys the whole store out and says later. <laughs> <laughs> and then becomes like one of the richest cryptocurrency miners in, in, in uh, existence. Right. And he's oh, just God. raking it in. So, you know, um, yeah, it's just one of those things where you got to have conviction here in, in the crypto market in order to, you know, persevere with this stuff long term. And just like, you know, uh, I, I think there's people out there who, you know, they listen, like you mentioned, listen too much to their parents, listen too much to significant others, listen too much to the FUD on the media, listen too much to the government, listen too much to the banks. And, um, you know, that's a lot of people to be kind of, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh uh critical being misinformed or, or, by yeah. mostly like, that's probably the best way to put it exactly exactly nancy so, pelosi you shit. you can't tell me she doesn't have bitcoin <laughs> she knows how to invest man nancy pelosi is the greatest investor of her of, of, of her generation man like there's no better investor than her i mean mm -hmm. she definitely got btc in her portfolio 
Man, her mm. eyebrows are going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to pay for that. It's probably Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Did you have that meme uh, on hand, Miguel, with with Nancy Pelosi at the beginning of the year? Like, oh wait, wait, uh, I have to shoot. I have to find it. Basically. Oh, okay. Or you can, or you can just next one meme. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to do that. Yeah, basically, I think the the redditors were uh, basically just uh, arguing that she's a, she's uh, buying stocks. It's like, oh shit, the market's gonna pump this year. It's like, well, what if Nancy Pelosi is counter trading everybody? <laughs> 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 just trying to get y'all wrecked. Oh, real quick, Alex brings up a good point. Please hit the like button. It helps out for the YouTube algorithm, and I'd really appreciate that. And subscribe if you haven't. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Yes, do it, people. Do it. Get me to the moon when it comes to subscribers and likes. Yes, yes. Yeah, we got a pretty good average here. I think it's like almost a one-to-one -one ratio of viewers to to likes, so that's always good to see. Oh, nice. Miguel, you got the meme? Uh, I'm still looking for it. Uh, <laughs> intermission, people. Don't fail us. Don't fail us, Miguel. Intermission. <laughs> no, but, like, it, it's pretty insane how governments even, and I think that's the most rancid part of it all. It's like government keeps... Um, trying to push people out of like cryptocurrency, mm. but like behind the scenes, they're buying a lot of shit up. Yeah. Oh, here we go. They're all they're also in bed with Coinbase. <laughs> no, I love this one. So Nancy Pelosi, trader of the year. Right here. <laughs> I mean, I she might it might have be all the whole 2020s, man. But if you look right here, right, this is breaking. Nancy Pelosi buys millions of dollars in call options for Google, Roblox, and Disney. That's bullish, bro. <laughs> oh, by the way, if something happens to me, I am not suicidal. Just saying. If something <laughs> happens to me after this meme sharing, I am not suicidal. People. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Fundamental you. analysis, fun flows, volume oh. profile, full of Pelosi traits. <laughs> 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 that, that's pretty much what government does nowadays. Yeah, I mean, there was that lady Kelly Lawfer, right? She, um, I think she owned a WNBA team. Uh, she was married to the guy who runs uh, the Nasdaq in the United States. That's in charge of like the stock uh, market, right? The S and P five hundred. Um, and she uh, basically uh, was CEO of this company called Backed B B A A B A K K T, and um, you know she was. Uh, like basically did a failure in terms of Bitcoin futures with that in 2019. Then she went over and she got kicked out of her WNBA team because all her players hated her. Then she was uh, put into a Senate seat in the United States because, um, you know, uh, somebody in her district died and, and basically she got put in there uh, through the government. And then she didn't get reelected. She got kicked out of that because she was doing insider trading. And so it's just like, oof, oof, oof. But it's like one of these things where it's like, that she was just basically exposed and exposing a lot of senators, Congress people um, that, I mean, that's like not common practice, but it's like, people are like, well, Nancy Pelosi doesn't press the button. It's her husband that buys the stocks. It's just like, are you fucking kidding me? I uh, <laughs> they, they keep making up things. And the reason I bring that up is look where Bitcoin came from. Like I just mentioned, 40 K today is a 10% fear on the, fear greed index so that's pretty bad last year it was like 90 percent greed mm -hmm. yet from all mainstream outlets they keep saying bitcoin is wrong crypto is for terrorists and uh what else like drug dealers things like that meanwhile the market just goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up with uh outlets mainstream outlets trying to get people out of it didn't the same thing happen with uh wasn't that google stocks yeah and the internet in general like it's the same same thing right it was like uh in the early days in the mid 90s oh the internet it's for drug dealers pornographers uh the the, the worst of scum of humanity right and then yeah like once the the, the tech stock boom started happening google amazon it was like up only right it's yeah. just like up 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 and then the crash happened and it's like oh my god the internet's a scam right amazon's going to zero and it's like would, during that dip would you have been better off to buy amazon and google stock or would you have been better to freak out and just say yep this technology thing is going nowhere the 21st century going back to horse and buggy 
You know, it's like, what do you think is happening here, right? It's like, clearly, there's a trend and a trajectory going into the beginning uh, portion of this century that probably you want to go along with the wave. You don't really want to be swimming against the current on this one, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And again, that's why I like you guys so much. Look at all establishment media, but look at the technology. Like, don't trust everything you hear from like institutions and things like that, right. but look at the technology itself. Well, not everybody has the knowledge to look at that and think to themselves, oh, this might be a good thing. And that's where you two come in with like this basic step-by-step -step program, not necessarily program, the course, of course, but like a map, an outlet of this is how crypto works. This is why the technology is has future investments and a very good return on the investment instead of just listening to everybody else around you and help people who don't know better yet to understand what's really going on. So if you guys don't mind, where does the stored course start and where does it go for people who might be interested mm -hmm. in it? As you should be, by the way, be interested in it. Yeah, you want to mention a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So the course starts January 21st, right? The sales are right now <laughs> until the 16th, <laughs> which is from now until Sunday at midnight Pacific Standard Time. And basically what, what ends up happening is um, as soon as you start taking the course, you're going to get all this pre-recorded content that'll, that uh, will get you into the basics of like where, where to buy your cryptocurrencies, how to use, how to use Uniswap, which are the wallets we recommend, as well as a list of um, what we call, what we call it the Google Doc, which is a curated list of links of, of different of resources that that'll be pretty useful to someone starting off in the crypto in the crypto space. From there, me and Charlie go off into essentially showing you how to earn money on your money, as well as what are the what do we consider the top forty coins in the ecosystem right now for this quarter? Um, plays possibilities with um, ETH flippings and stuff like that, which we can talk about a little bit um, if we want as well. Um, ch basic charting and um, just more and more kind of like um, what I could call GameFi. Basically, GameFi is like how to earn how to earn and make money off of games, basically, which is pretty insane. You know, your mom said you couldn't make money off of, off of uh, gaming. She's she's dead wrong. <laughs> yeah, everybody in the red pill says crypto. Uh, it says um, what do you call it? Like uh, video games are going to ruin your life. They just may make you a sovereign individual. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it might finally happen. Who's yeah. talking now? <laughs> you ever watch that movie Revenge of the Nerds? Mm. A very long time ago. I need to yeah. watch it again. Yeah, it's like one of those eighties cult classics, right? It's just like, man, like is that only that's just like uh exactly how, how the twenty first century is playing playing out. You know, it's like you used to be a nerd, you know, point dexter uh for uh you know getting into computers at all, right? And now it's like if you're not into computers in terms of like knowing how to use them and stuff, you're like basically treated as illiterate, uh semi retarded, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, just be, just being real you know like um there's pretty literally much. you know it's pretty and, much the case of the 21st yeah. century so it's going to be the same thing in my opinion with like crypto like you mentioned earlier right like um uh you know you guys you know ha not everybody has the ability to look into the technology well we weren't on a leg up of any sort you know uh, we've just been consistently paying attention to this market like i'm a creative writing major like one of the, the worst uh, degrees you, that you can technically get, right? Like in terms of like usefulness. Uh, Aaron Clary entered the chat. There we go. There we go. So, <laughs> and not even not even just a normal creative writing major. Bachelor of Fine Arts, my, may I mind you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy was going to get a heart attack. <laughs> but you know, the funny thing about it is, like, I was never really interested in finance in terms of the traditional financial space because I know that space is generally rigged, right? And so I was like. Why do I need to learn all this stuff? It's like all these complicated jargon terms and like really at the end of the day, just Wall Street's controlling everything. So um, for the most part, people, general public isn't going to win on that shit. Um, and so I just kind of was just like, yeah, I'm not really that interested in it. But as soon as I bought some Ethereum, right, um, about two months later, I did a Forex on it, um, just about a thousand bucks. It turned into four thousand dollars in two months. I was like, holy shit, I got to learn about this stuff. And so the first thing that you mentioned there, like, not everybody's able to look into what this stuff is. Neither were we. Like, I was like, why is this not a scam? Why is this not going to zero? 
right, for Ethereum and Bitcoin and, and everything else. And so I did, you know, my due diligence and looked into it because the money, the proof is in the money, right? Like if you start making gains and, and you see something like that, you don't see that in the traditional markets. So then, you know, I just went off and like studied, you know, as much as I could when I'm on the train back from work, when I'm, you know, at work, <laughs> when I, you know, got home, you know, um, just like finding every minute I can to like uh, take it more. And Miguel's exactly the same. He'll probably give you his story as well, right? But it's one of these things where it's like, um, it's all about, you know, how motivated are you as a individual to become self-sovereign and responsible for your financial future, right? If you think the government's going to take care of you, if you think mommy and daddy are going to take care of you, if you think, <laughs> you know, your girlfriend's going to take care of you, <laughs> you know, like it, it's just not going to happen, right? So you got to put in the work, you got to study this because like we're saying, right, the trend is there, it's obvious and you got to put in the work. So we don't necessarily say like, uh, hey, you know, we're going to give you all the tips. You're going to be a millionaire tomorrow. No, what we tell you is like we challenge you in the course and we say, hey, here's the information that we gathered over the last five years. You get it in the course of two weeks uh, in like, uh, you know, uh, kind of a boot camp fashion. Like we're going to give it to you fast and quick, but it's going to save you like four years of studying basically. Oh. Right. And so, I mean, Miguel, what can you mention kind of like how you like got into this as well? Cause like yeah. you've been studying finance for quite a while, but in terms of like, you know, um, where you came from as well, it wasn't necessarily like we had an advantage over anybody else. Right. Oh no, definitely. I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I was a blue collar business owner. I had a landscape business and, um, basically what I did is like, I mean, yeah, I was studying my, I mean, basically I was always on the track where like I was doing nothing financial other than maybe like owning my own business. And, uh, basically at 18, I made sure that I was like, well, I'm going to learn about this money stuff. It was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to make it, I got to make it in one way. So I'll make as much money as I can in business and then I'll reinvest that capital. That'll get me out of the rat race basically was my kind of my thesis for everything. So I started off by listening to Bloomberg radio. Um, well, I'm shout, out Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Bloomberg, but, um, the, um, they had released like one of their first uh, online in, um, radio, um, apps on the iPhone 3GS back in, back in 2009 and 10. And I, I wasn't listening to music. I was listening to Pim Fox talking stock <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I learned a lot about equities as well as like, I knew a lot about the bits of the federal reserve and the federal funds and everything like that. Um, Shout out to Ben Bernanke. <laughs> but um, from there, um, I got into stock picking and stuff. And then um, eventually, um, funny enough, um, I ended up, I was following a stock guy called, um, what's what's his name? Um, my God, I'm, I'm the, the, the financial education channel, basically. And this guy was just wouldn't shut the hell up about shitting about Bitcoin. I got, obviously it was probably threatening him because, you know, he's talking about stocks and then crypto's making like a million times of gains <laughs> in comparison. So it's like, you know, he's talking about like, Hey, I did pretty good. You guys this year, I'm up 28% for the whole year. <laughs> I do 28% sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a sort of thing where like, um, you know, because, because of this person hating, um, I ended up checking out crypto again. And then, um, I was just hooked right off the bat. And basically, there wasn't a single moment of, of almost any day that I did not have. Um, I, I wasn't listening to some, you know, Lark Davis or any of the early guys uh, talking about Bitcoin, stacking sats and chill. Um, and, <laughs> um, you know, eventually I got myself a full BTC through the cash app and a bunch of other methods and stuff. And then I just kept I just kept at it 24. I mean, I was like, uh, like I wanted it so bad. And like that, that's a, the, the, the sort of thing is like you don't have to be. You don't have to have come back from like a, a finance a finance background or anything to be in cryptocurrencies. It's just more or less a hunger of knowledge, basically. And um, I threw in every dollar I could possibly like throw in. Like that's why I call myself dollar cost crypto because I would dollar cost average daily. I and so every day as soon as I make my money, I'll put a little away for bills. Every every other penny would go into buying some crypto or buying Litecoin or Bitcoin or ETH <coughs> back in the day until eventually. Um, it retired me basically where, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Um, I passed the business along to my, to my family members and like, I'm doing crypto full time, you know, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we, we're, out, we're out here floating in the, the anti-gravity space. So uh, there ain't no nice. going back. How, how, many years, <laughs> how many years have you been in crypto individually? Uh, so, six. Yeah. 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 Miguel, which month in 2016 did you get in? Uh, December. 
Yep, yep. And then I got in in May of 2017. Uh, so yeah, very, very. And uh, the the how many times. the how many time is this that you're uh, opening the course? This is uh, the let's see. Uh, we did what last year? Yep. My fifth, six. It's, it's the sixth, sixth time. Yep. Yeah. Six six number yeah. six. So like we and did. How, yeah. Go ahead. How many participants have you already helped? Uh, over 6,000 uh, in terms of people who've taken our products and services of any kind. In terms of the course, I think is around like maybe 4,000 to 4,500. Yeah. Damn. Jesus Christ. That's over 6,000 people helped guys with Bitcoin. Yep. Like beginners, intermediates, experts. Okay. Everybody. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of a lot of people that, you know, think they're experts in crypto. They come to the course, realize they're not um, Well, they may be in certain aspects. Right. But they got gaps to fill. And then we have people who come to the course who are brand new beginners and think it's too difficult for them. They can't understand this stuff. Maybe they, some I've even had people ask me, like, am I intelligent enough to understand crypto? I'm like, yes, like anybody really can. And um, um yeah, basically, uh, those guys as well become, you know, uh, very active. So it's interesting to see everybody kind of just jump in there and make it, you know, um, you know, what they need of it. And, there, you know, we give a lot of information so people can kind of pick and choose, you know, what's most important for them. Like there's some people who maybe like hate video games and like they just like say, hey, um, to my nieces and nephews or my kids or whatever, like they'll go make them play the video games. They just finance them. And then they, you know, they're the little workers that, you know, continue to turn them some profits. Like we hear guys making those. Not financial things. advice, by the way, all of it, not financial advice, <laughs> disclaimer, not, not, not life <laughs> advice necessarily, but Hey, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, so. <laughs> mm. yeah. Absolutely. Miguel, you want to add right. something to that? No, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think Charlie said it all basically on that side. But Because um, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I got to wrap up soon. It's been an absolute joy talking to you uh, two again. Miguel, yeah, thank you for showing up on time. I know. Man. <laughs> you, man. I know, man. <laughs> you, you know I like you. Um, guys, get on the Cultivate Crypto Mindset course right here in the link in the chat. I have been getting advice from Charlie since... 2019 17 19 or, or 18 it was pretty early on well, it must have been 2019 because i think that's when we first got introduced via john right really was that 19 yeah oh yeah it's already 2021 by god man 2022 bro <laughs> oh god don't make this worse <laughs> we are getting older that is Oh it god, happening. like I, I had to think how old I was a while back. I'm like, oh shit, I'm already 31. What? <laughs> What's going on? But what I wanted to say is Charlie's advice has never failed me. Really, Charlie's advice has never failed me. So I trust Charlie when he tells me, Hey, I've got this project and we're helping people out, yeah. and I put my full faith in it that he's actually helping people. Same as Miguel. I mean, that guy does pull up with two plates. Yes, sir. Me, motherfucker, if you can lift that much more than me, you've got my trust, man. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not going against that. So, yeah, plus, basically, basically, if Jack doesn't buy Bitcoin, Ethan, poke it out. We're, we're sending Miguel over to his house. <laughs> yeah, <kidding>. probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, but over six thousand people helped. You guys helped me out a lot, and I really appreciate that. And that's why I endorse this course. So, guys, if you haven't already, get on the course now. Get your finances in order. Get your crypto knowledge in order. Um, what are the dates? Hit me. Yep. Details. So like Miguel said, the course is open right now until Sunday, uh, January 16th at midnight uh, US time. So uh, get in or have fun staying poor. Um, and then <laughs> it's a tagline we got going. And um, then on January 21st, we start the first webinars at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And those webinars go through January 31st. There's 15 live webinars and uh, five plus uh, recorded webinars. Uh, when you get into the course it, within 24 hours, you get access to the Telegram group, which is an application where we have in, uh, encrypted messaging uh, services. And there, um, there's already two videos. Um, I think it's about maybe three and a half to five hours of content that you get straight away from getting into the course. Um, so that gives you between now um, and uh, the 21st to study that material, make sure you understand what's going on, make sure you have 
your wallets, uh, like a couple of wallets set up, a couple of exchanges set up in whichever country you may be, um, and then get ready um, essentially to, um, you know, take your dirty, dirty fiat money and uh, throw it at uh, some of the cryptocurrency gains that we got going for 2022. Mm -hmm. well, for people who might be wondering now, like wallets, wallets, what is he talking about? Do you take them like step by step? Like yes. this is a wallet. How do you, this is how you set it up. Don't worry. Even if you're like a total noob, like Aaron Clary, <laughs> you yes, can get even Aaron Clary, I think, could uh, pull this one off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what more? What more of a statement do you want? We can get Aaron it's Clary true. into crypto. The most so, boomers of boomers. Yeah, we, 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 <laughs> there is a there's a show with the Tokyo Crypto Show that we did on Modern Life Dating's channel for John's channel uh, back. Uh, I think it was maybe April of 2020, if I'm not mistaken, with. Mr. Clary, uh, it was a good episode, and, and you know he was you know um, a mild proponent of crypto um, with some caveats there. Um, which actually, to be honest, it was the best time to be buying Bitcoin uh, over the last few years. Exactly at that time, uh, just you know, gotta gotta mention that. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it's one of these things like let's let's get them like uh, moved on to it. You know, we'll we'll get Aaron Clary into the metaverse, which he'll probably uh, be uh, clawing tooth and nail to avoid. Um, but he'll be happy that he did. I, I, I could see Cappy as a really good, you know, B BTC Maxi. You know, I think he fit really <laughs> well in that camp. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, guys, I support these two. I really do. Go uh, to Cultivate Crypto's channel, subscribe there, and go to Dollar Cost Crypto's channel and subscribe to Miguel. Did I miss anything? Or did you guys have a final message, last words? Last thing I'll mention is I, I really respect, you know, the mindset shift that you've had over the last like couple of years in crypto. Like, you know, you, you're one of the best dip buyers that I've seen in, in crypto. Whenever you don't ever freak out when the dip is coming. It's like basically it's, hey, bros, it's time to buy. And I'm like, awesome, awesome. And, and then also in terms of like, you know, your longer term goals, um, you know, I think um, it's good to see you kind of like starting to kind of zoom out and, um, you know, uh, you know, shoot for the stars, baby. Let's go to Andromeda and beyond. So, uh, yeah, I did time. realize, especially with what's going on now in the world, you cannot have too much. Correct. You cannot have too much with the state of the world right now. Like at first it was like, ah, you know what? I'll just, I need a certain amount to like cover my means. And I'm kind of like, you know what? Let's get as much as we can. Let's go. Yeah, because you got to be sovereign uh, from the government if you want true freedom uh, right now, right? Like, I mean, that's just the way it is. So you got to be able to call your own shots, call what you want to do, and not be reliant on others, 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, final super chat. Ryan Sullivan with the $5. Thank you very much. Aaron Clary is high IQ. <laughs> Still can't figure out how to use a crypto wallet. <laughs> hey, it's the curse uh, of the high IQ, man. <laughs> yeah, we talk about that. We do talk about that in the course. <laughs> Dude, I, I respect the hell out of Aaron Clary, dude. Like, of course, me, I was we just, all do. He knows why. I, of course we do. He nope. knows why I give him guff. I love the man. He knows that. Don't <laughs> like, tell him, by the way. If he, if, if he dishes it out, he's got to be able to take it back, right? Oh, man. Did you see that meme I made of him? No. no. Which one? Oh, I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to the both of you. Marty with the 499 super chat. Thank you very much. Here you go, Jack. I'm here to support your vegan or cat diet. Up yours, Marty. <laughs> Guys, thank you all for being here. Please hit the like, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below what your thoughts were of this show. The link to the course is in the chat and will be in the description. It closes on January 16th at midnight Pacific Standard Time. So... If you want to stop being poor and finally get that big titted girlfriend, get on it. I will see you guys you soon. Go. Cheers. Cheers.